All right, so problem eight, we got our chart. You can go ahead and set that up. Pause the video if you need to. Cantaloupe is a sole proprietor of a small service company. So again, we're dealing with a business, business activity. During the, for, during the current year, you have the following transactions. There's A, B, and C. By the way, these, this is all part of C. Okay, so let's go through. Let's start off A. So in A, Cantaloupe sold office equipment using his business for $2,500 on August 2nd. Got a $2,500 amount realized. The equipment was purchased three years ago for $8,000. Accumulated depreciation on the date of sale was $4,640. So we're going to calculate the adjusted basis first. So the adjusted basis is going to be the $8,000 purchase price minus the $4,640 of depreciation. So what is that? $3,360? So the adjusted basis is $3,360. So in this transaction, we have a $860 loss. It's an $860 loss in A. It's a sale, so it's going to be recognized in step two. Boom, go to step three, characterization. Is it going to be capital gain, capital loss under general rule? No, why not? It's a sale or exchange, but it's not a capital asset. It's not a capital asset. Why? Because it's number two on our list. It's business, personal property, subject to depreciation. Boom, move on to 1231. Does 1231 apply? Yes. Sale or exchange of business property that's depreciable, held for more than a year. It's held for three years. So it looks like it's going to be the main hodgepot, 860. Before we put it there, does 1245 apply? No, why not? Loss, exactly. Perfect. Boom. Moving on. <laughs> Getting stuff done. B, on March 12th, Cantaloupe sold an apartment building that has been held as an investment. So we saw in a previous problem, there was an apartment building that was held as a business activity. This is an investment activity. Got to be careful. If I tell you it's an investment, it's an investment. If I tell you it's a business, it's a business. Same with CPA exam, same with law school exams, same with whatever professor you're out there. Practice, well, practice you might have to look into because someone might tell you it's an investment, but it might be business or vice versa. All right, so we got investment, apartment building. Sales proceeds are $240,000. So that's amount realized. It was purchased for $200,000. Adjusted basis is $143,000. So we have a $97,000 realized gain that's sold, so it's going to be recognized. So we're moving right to characterization, just like that. The depreciation actually taken is equal to the depreciation allowable using regular makers. That just means that, hey, Section 1250 doesn't apply because it's always been using the straight line method. It's not pre-1987 property, which in my examples, we always assume that anyways. This is Cantaloupe's only passive activity, and there are no current or suspended passive activity losses associated with it. That means if you're carrying over passive activity loss, you could offset this gain of 97,000. We don't have any, let's not make it difficult. Let's just move on and characterize it. We got $97,000 gain. We go through our rules. We have a sale or exchange, yes. Is it a capital asset? Yes. Finally, right? So many problems we've been doing, pretty much all 1231, we got capital asset. How is a capital asset? Go through our list of what's not a capital asset. I just focus on the big six. The first one, inventory is not a capital asset. Number two and three deal with business. This isn't business, it's an investment. Number four deals with certain intellectual property self-created. This is not intellectual property. Five is accounts receivable, six supplies, boom, capital asset. We've got a capital gain of $97,000. The final thing we have to do is, is it long-term capital gain or short-term capital gain? We're not told how long it was held. So you're saying, okay, I can't do it. I don't know. Yeah, you do. It was purchased for $200,000. The basis is $143,000. What's that? Depreciation. You've had to take depreciation at some point. Even if you add to the building, you had to take depreciation at some point. Your basis has gone down. Can we take bonus depreciation or section 179 depreciation on real property? No. So it's got to be what? Regular maker's depreciation. Regular maker's depreciation on residential apartment building is 27 and a half years. If you take 200 minus $143,000 basis, that's what? Uh, 57,000? I think 57,000, that's been recovered over a few years. If you're doing 27 and a half, that means you've held it for more than a year. CPA exam loves to do that, love to integrate all those concepts like they've just done. That's how they test multiple concepts, understand multiple concepts. 
And that's how we know it's been held for more than a year. So we've got a $97,000 long-term capital gain. Before I put it under other, sorry, before I put it under other, I'm not going to write it down first, we got to worry about 1245. Does 1245 apply? It applies to capital gains. We have a capital gain. Why doesn't it apply? It's real property. It's an apartment building. Section 1245 only applies to personal property. Therefore, we put $97,000 under other, and the character is going to be long-term capital gain. Let's go on to C. On October 20th, Cantaloupe sold a warehouse, we got real property, that had been used in business for $150,000. He purchased it for $120,000, adjusted basis is $104,000. So we have a realized gain of $46,000. Boom. It was a sale. Guess what? It's going to be recognized. Just like that, move right to step three. The depreciation actually taken is equal to the depreciation allowable under regular makers. It means, again, Section 1250, 1250 does not apply. It was acquired after 1986. We got $46,000 gain. The last step is to determine the character. It's business, real property. Just like, number, just like in B, it's been held for more than a year. How do we know? Because, look, we bought it for $120,000. And the basis is now 104. It's a warehouse. Warehouse is 39-year property. To recover $16,000 at a minimum, because you might have added to it, $16,000 of adjusted basis. You have to hold that for more than a year, if it's over 39 years, right? Okay? So we definitely held it for more than a year. So we go through the characterization. It's not capital gain, capital loss under general rule. Why? It's not a capital asset, right? Because it's real property used in trade or business. Then we go to 1231. Does 1231 main hodgepodge apply? Yes. We have a sale or exchange of property held more than a year because we know from the depreciation. And finally, it's business real property. Number three on our list. So it is a $46,000 main hodgepodge. Before we write it down, does 1245 apply? No, why not? 1245 only applies to personal property. Okay, now we can net. Nothing 1245. We don't net 1245 anyways. I just always note that. Nothing in the sub hodgepot. Nothing to net in the sub hodgepot. We can move on. Right to the main hodgepot. We have a net gain of $45,140. What does that mean? Everything the main hodgepodge is, long-term capital. So we have a long-term capital loss, long-term capital gain. Last step, we've got some long-term capital gains. If you see long-term capital gains, you got to ask, hey, is it real property that's been depreciated? B, you got rental, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, rental real estate or rental apartment building or apartment building, whatever you want to think of it. It's real property that's been depreciated. Yes, unrecaptured section 1250 applies. It's the lesser of the amount of depreciation taken on it or the realized recognized gain. I'm not going to calculate that for you, but that's what it would be. C, same thing. We have a warehouse that's real property that's been depreciated, right? Unrecaptured section 1250 applies, right? The 25% the rate. It's the lesser of the depreciation taken or the realized recognized gain. And we are done with this problem.